Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to look at how water tube boilers work. Specifically, we're going to look at water tube boilers that are employed in coal-fired power stations. We'll look at all of the main systems associated with these large water tube boilers, and we'll look at the main components, and then I'll tell you exactly how the whole thing works. Now, before I get started with the video, I just want to say that Mo, our head 3D artist at Savry, spent a lot of time working on this model, and we agreed that we should open it up to the public for free, at least for the next three months, so people can actually use it and check it out. And so I've put a link in the video description area. Feel free to check out that link where you can play around with the boiler and do everything that you see me doing in this video. So let's now take a look at our water tube boiler. Here's our water tube boiler that we modeled in 3D. And as you can see, there's quite a lot happening with this boiler. It would be quite difficult to explain using a diagram or perhaps even using the 3D model as it is right now. So what we did, we changed the model slightly and we used our configurator to break it down so that we could see inside the 3D model. And we could also isolate each of the systems and I can explain to you exactly how those systems then work. So let's start with the fuel system. In order to show you the fuel system, I'm gonna to have to hide a few more bits and bobs. So just bear with me a moment. So I think we've hidden enough parts. Let's zoom in and have a look at our day silos. Now we're feeding coal into the boiler, but before we feed it directly into the boiler, we have to store it briefly, and then we're gonna send it to one of our pulverizers. So we've got one silo, two, three, four, and these four day silos usually give us enough capacity for between four to eight hours, sometimes 12 hours. And that means if we get a problem with a conveyor in the coal yard or something like that, we can keep our boiler in service because we can feed the coal directly from the day silos rather than feeding it all the way back from our coal yard. The day silos feed down into our coal pulverizers. You can see them coming down here. You can also see coming down here, quite narrow actually. And they're gonna feed down the shaft here into our coal pulverizer. The same setup is present on all four. You can see once again, if I come across here, it comes down from the silo, across and down, and it will drop into the middle of our coal pulverizer and will pulverize the coal. When we pulverize coal, we're essentially reducing its size drying it and classifying it. Classifying means that we're sort of passing it through kind of a filter, you could say in a way, or a grate, and that ensures that the coal is the correct size when it gets to the boiler. We don't call it a filter or a grate, we call it a classifier, and usually it's a rotating object inside the coal pulverizer itself. If you wanna learn more about coal pulverizers, then I will put the link in the video description area, because we've actually got a tutorial for that as well. Once we've ground and dried and classified our coal, we're gonna send it out of these tubes here. See them coming out and I'll follow them around. You can see them coming across here and they're all gonna feed in. Let me just zoom out slightly. Gonna come around here and they're gonna feed in to our burners. Now let me just configure the model for a moment. I'll hide some parts and we can go in and have a look at the burner and the wind box. So we're going inside the furnace now and our coal is gonna be sprayed into the furnace through here. Let me see if I can get a better angle with a bit more light. You can see there's a nozzle here. In fact, let's just go over the other side. Perhaps the lighting is slightly better. There's a nozzle here. We're gonna spray the pulverized coal out of that nozzle. We're gonna light it, we're gonna get combustion. And around the outside here, we're also gonna blow air in as well, which is gonna ensure that we get very efficient combustion. Behind these tubes, which I can now hide, is actually what they call a wind box. So we can see it's coming in like so. And our wind box here allows air to fill up this space and the air is gonna be then pushed into the furnace. 
We have two main air systems associated with the water tube boiler. That is primary air and secondary air. If you haven't watched any of our other videos in the coal fired power station series, then you should definitely check those out. I'll put the link in the video description area. Don't forget that this 3D model is currently available to access for free and will be for about the next 12 weeks. So go on the website, have a play around with the boiler, see if you can learn all the systems, all of the parts and how they work together. And if you want to learn even more about water tube boilers, fire tube boilers and steam, then definitely check out some of our video courses. We've got over 30 hours of engineering video tutorials, over 25 different courses, and each of those courses is equipped with quizzes and 3D models, so you can really reinforce everything that you're learning. If you like this video, then please do like it or share it on social media. It really does help us out and it is appreciated. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks very much for your time.